Hi, welcome to this lecture. We have been discussing about functions. We considered various graphs and wrote down equations for all those graphs and we had functions that are increasing like y is equal to mx plus c, 2x, 3x and x square and x cubed and all that. Then we also had functions that is decreasing y is equal to minus mx or y is equal to e power minus x. Then we had functions that is oscillating, it is increasing and decreasing. We had sin x, cos x and some combination of this is also possible. So we got used to, we familiarize ourselves with various functions. Now we are going to go one step beyond. So today we are going to talk about images and images are essentially 2D or 3D functions and I will explain you what do I mean by this. So <clears throat> the question that we will address today or we will try to answer today is that how can we mathematically represent an image or a picture as a function. Right? This is what we will try to address in this lecture. How can we, if we are given, get, if we get an image, can we write a mathematical equation for this or is there a way of mathematically representing it as an image? The reason why we are thinking about is clear that when we do experiments in biology, very often you will get data and you plot as a graph, but it is also very common or in cell biologies and all that, it is very often you get images, you get fluorescently labeled, you say fluorescently labeled cell, so you get an image or <clears throat> if you think of some situations in biology, so for example consider concentration of a particular protein in a cell. So what we are going to consider, we are going to consider concentration of a particular protein So, whatever let us call it protein P in a cell. So, if you draw a cell like this, it might so happen that the P is either uniformly distributed. So, what are the possibilities? Some possibilities that we can think of how this con how this uh, protein P might be distributed more. So, it could be equally distributed everywhere, so it could be uniformly distributed everywhere or it can so happen that this in a cell we can have the proteins distributed more towards one side of the protein and less towards the other side due to some reason. There are examples of such proteins. It can so happen also that maybe they are <coughs> they are more in the edges and less in the middle. So it can happen that the protein concentration is very high here and very high here and very little in the middle. So these are some possibilities. So now if you want to these are some if you take this in image that you get from an experiment, these are some 2D images in some sense. So, if you want to represent this mathematically, how will you represent? So, what we have been doing so far is y is equal to f of x. So, we had one x axis and a y value. So, we had, but we had to go beyond this and we have to do z is equal to f of x comma y. So, we have to calculate a function z which is a function of both x and y given an x value and a y value <coughs> we can get a z function. So, this is will be this will be the simplest way to represent a 2D image. So, this function has three variables z, x and y. So, this is an equation having three variables. So, let us think of, so we said that in the simplest case we had an equation something like y is equal to x. We said this as the simplest equation possible. Now, if you want to go beyond this z is equal to what would be some function that you can think of. For example, I can think of z is equal to x plus y. <coughs> this is 
some function that you can think of. You can even think of even simpler function, but in 2D. So let us say you can say that z is equal to some 10 minus 2x. This is another function possible, but here there is no y. But still, you can plot this as a 2D function and I let us think about this. So let us think about this function first and then we will go to this function. So if we think about z is equal to 10 minus 2x and plot it in 2D, 10 minus 2x. So this function is independent of y, there is no y in this equation. So whatever be the y value, z, is, z doesn't depend on y. So if you make a table, so we can make a table for this. So we have x, y and z. So if I just take x value 0 will be 10, 10 minus 2 times 0 which is 10. If x is 1, doesn't matter whatever be the value of y, I can put any value of y I want, uh, then this will be independent of y value. So the z will be 10 minus 2, it will be 8. If I put 2 here, z will be 10 minus 2 times 2, 4, so it will be 6. If I put 3 here, this will be 10 minus 6, this will be 4 and so on and so forth. I can make a table like this. Whatever y value I put, the z will be independent of that y value. So we have such a function. Now how will it appear if we plot it as a graph? So I am going to show you how this will look like if we plot as a graph. So if I plot z, so I can also represent this as f of x, y is equal to 10 minus 2x or equivalently. So I said that there are different ways, we said there are different ways of, there are different notations possible. So one typical notation that we will use, we, we said it could be z is equal to some, we can say z as a function of x and y or you can say that f as a function of x and y. There are different ways of representing. So what I have shown here is the function that we are interested in is 10 minus 2x. So if I plot it as in 2D, it will look like this. So now let us look at this. When x is around 0, a x is 0, 10 minus 0 is 10. So all value is 10 independent of y. Whatever be the y value, when y is equal to 0, it is 10. When y is 1 also is 10, when y is 2, it is 10, when y is 3, it is 10, when y is 4, it is 10. So the yellow color is like a stripe which is independent of the x value, sorry independent of the y value. It depends on x, when x is 0, it is 10, the 10 means yellow. So what is shown here is a color code. So when this, look at this small vertical bar here, yellow color means value is very high and it is 10. The black color means value is very small around 2 here. So the red color means value is around 6 and 7, violet bluish color means value is around 3 and 4. So the value, the f value, the function value can be shown as a color here. We can think of them as a color. So this whole thing is yellow. What does it mean? This means that when I substitute x is 0, 10 minus 2 times 0 is 10 and 10 is yellow. So the whole thing is yellow, whatever be the y value. Now consider the next one when x is 1, as we showed 10 minus 2 times 1 is 8. So 8 corresponds to some kind of reddish color. So slightly orangish red. So when x is 1, y is 8 everywhere and this is independent of y again. So 8 even if y is 3, y is 4, even if y is 1, everywhere it is 8. When x is 2, 10 minus 2 times 2, 4 which is 6. So this is red color, 
which is corresponding to 6. So, again it is independent of y. So, I have taken x values in discrete like so I have just divided this for convenience into some boxes that is why there is an this from here to here I assume that x value is 0, here to here I assume that x value is 1, here to here I assume. So, I discretized the space and I wrote 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, when x is 4, 10 minus 2 times 4 is 10 minus 8 which is 2 and it should be black color and the point to note is that this is independent of y. Whatever be the y value, you will get the same same f value the function value the so the function is independent of y and you get this and you can think of this in experiments so you can think of various context for example if you have a cell you can think of some stripes or you you are you, you very well know for example various orga, various like zebra zebra line we know very well about zebra line what what does this represent so this represents some stripe right so there is some concentration here and there is different proteinous concentration here so you can have like a different color if you wish and you can have a separate color and so on and so forth so you can think of some stripes like this some context of stripes in a on a 2d plane as something that is observable in biology for example in a tissue or even in a cell you could think of protein concentration <coughs> varying in a particular way which has some stripe like pattern. So, the simplest example that we want to show is f of x comma y is 10 minus 2 x here I wrote y but it is independent of y does not matter it actually does not depend on y. So, it is f of x only but I just wanted to plot in 2D and therefore I wrote this Y here and I hope you have understood the color code. Think about this if you have not understood think about it carefully and try to understand this stripe graph as a 2D function. <coughs> okay, now we will go to the next level as we said that the Z or F as x plus y where we will actually take a y value. So, we will write f of x comma y is x plus y. <coughs> now, if we make a table for this, how will the table appear? So, let us make a table for this. So, I will take x y f is equal to x plus y this is what I am going to have. So, when x is 0, y is 0, f is 0, x plus y is 0. When x is 0 and y is 1, this is 1. When x is 1, y is 0, this is 1. When x is 1, y is 1, this is 2. You can write various values, right? I can write 2 and 1, this will be 3. You can have 1 and 2, this is 3. You can have 2 and 2, this is 4. So, I can make a table like this for different values of x and y and I will get a nice table which I can plot and the plot will look like this. So, <coughs> what so carefully slowly look at this graph. What I have plotted here is f of x y is x plus y. So, if I take here the bottom left corner x is 0, y is 0, 0 plus 0 is 0 and this color code this thing this is also called heat map sometime. Uh, so, this color code here represents that the black is for very small values. So, the blackish here means 0 or very small value. So, this is 0. <coughs> then if I have x is 1 and y is 0 this is 1, this is also 1. So, for 1 it is slightly violetish, but black and violet combination. Then I have here 2, 1, x is 1, y is 1, then the value is 2. So, it will become 
more violet when this is 2 the color code this represents what is the code for the color. So, when it is 2 it is a violet color. Let us look this extreme here the top right corner. So, here x is after 8 this is 9. So, x is 9 y is 9 9 plus 9 it is 18 and 18 is a yellow color. So, 18 so that is why yellow color here and somewhere here. So, let us take here x is 6 y is equal 6 plus 6 is 12 here x is 6 y is 5. So, is 11 here x is 6 y is 4. So, is 10. So, 10 11 12 etcetera are slightly reddish color. <coughs> so, you can see that the color. So, now you see a nice image with a color pattern emerging here and this color pattern has a simple equation y f of x y is equal to x plus y. So, this equation represents this image with this color pattern you can think of removing all these numbers and just showing this color pattern alone and that would mean that there you have a nice image with you with some color pattern this might be something that you see in an experiment. So, this instead of this color you could think of some fluorescing you might have seen cells with fluorescent images. So, this, let us say various uh, this could be intensity. So, instead of color I could think of intensity of some fluorescing protein. So, high intensity or low intensity depending on the color you want and you can imagine a 2D intensity pattern like this that would represent <coughs> an image. So, this is something that which we want to get used to as a biologist. I want all of you to get used to thinking about 2D images as a function. Now, you can also plot this as z of x plus y like right I can we wrote sometime <coughs> the same thing as z so, z is equal to x plus y. So, I can plot this as a graph with this x this is y and a 3D graph with some z value appropriate z value. So, x y in plane and a z value and if I plot it it will look like this even though you might have some difficulty in understanding it immediately, but you can think of x y and x plus y is z. So, you can think of this as a plane like this and just think about this even though this would need uh, taking a paper yourself and holding as a plane and thinking about it a little bit. So, this is something I, I want you to get trained to think about two dimensional three dimensional functions like this. Now, we will <coughs> think of slightly more complicated functions. So, now we had simple function like z is equal to x plus y. Now, we will have slightly more complicated function f is equal to e power minus x square plus y square I can think of some, some function like this. So, then for every x value and y value I can calculate this function and plot. So, again you can make a table and we can plot them. So, let us say I have a table again as we had said we have x y then e power minus x square plus y square is the function that we have. So, 0 0 which is e power 0 which is 1. Then you can put 0 and 1. So, e power minus 1 and you can put 1 0 e power minus 1 will be the e power 1 square plus 0 square or 0 square plus 1 square you will get e power minus 1. You can put 1 1. So, e power 1 square plus 1 square will be e power minus 2 and you can put any any number here you want like let us say 5 7 if I put 5 7 like it will be e power minus 5 square which is 25 plus 7 square which is 49. So, this will be like 74. So, it will be e power minus 74 it will be a, a very small value if an x is 5 and y is 7 
right so there is a there is a bracket here this is a function that we want to plot e power minus x square plus y square so we will see how this will appear so have a look at here so when this is again a pattern of you can first look at the color pattern then <coughs> when x is 0 y is 0 you have e power 0 which is 1 then e power minus 0.2 so e power minus 0.1 e power minus 0.2 will be this and then e power minus 0 0.3 0 0.4 and somewhere here you will have e power minus 0 0.9 square plus 0 0.9 square so it says like 0 0.2 and if I take more and more value it will be very small so again what you are seeing here is a nice pattern of a color pattern that color pattern is a matrix so you can think of this is a matrix a 2d function and what i want you to think about that given an image you can get a 2d matrix like this which may or may not be able to write as an equation but you can get a data a 2d data like this or given a 2d data you can plot a color pattern like this so this is something that we should get trained as a biologist who is trying to learn mathematics so the bottom line that i want all of you to know is that any image you get you can think of it as a 2d 2d function and it would be very complicated function where we may not be able to write an equation but we whatever be the function that you get whatever be the image that you get <coughs> any complicated image you get so i got some pattern image so let us say there's some concentration pattern i got i can divide this cell into small i can divide this cell into small grids like this so i can divide this cell into grids like this and ask a question so let me divide I'm dividing this into grids and ask a question in this first grid so i can draw this x and y so i can extend this grids for a 2d purpose if you want and i would extend this grid this way also <coughs> and so on and so forth so I can ask the question in the first grid how many black dots you see in the second grid in this grid in each of this grid how many black dots you see maybe there are some grids where there are many 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 black dots so if you have many 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 black dots in a particular grid so there is a there is a very high concentration there is a stripe of black dots here so then you will write down some particular function even here let us say there is uh, many 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 black dots here in this cells so you can divide the cells like this into grids and get nice black dot and this is some function of x comma y so given an x value and a y value so I have a function f which is essentially the number of black dots right here the number of black dots is my f for a given x value and a y value I can count how many black dots are there and that will give me some f of x comma y which is a mathematical function <coughs> so you can also we just talked about this function here e power minus x square plus y square you can also plot it as z is equal to e power minus x square plus y square uh, with some graph like this depending on various values of x and y I can get various interesting graphs uh, there is some coefficient I can put here I can write I can write e power minus I can write z is equal to 
e power minus x square plus y square by some sigma square and depending on different values of sigma I can get different kinds of plots and I want you to so the general equation for here is e power minus x square plus y square divided by sigma square and different values of sigma I will get different plots. So this is something that I want you to think about. Now I want you to also think about something as a some concentration let us say as a function of x, y and t. So you have something which is a function of x, y but it is also changing with time. So <coughs> you have a cell which is this in red and you have some concentration of some proteins which is here but this concentration is at t equal to 0 is like this that is high concentration here low concentration here. Now after t is equal to 2 minutes this could change such a way that it is high concentration here and low concentration here. So the concentration has changed with time. So it is like this thing says flowing here. So this is like a flow. So c of x comma y comma t if you write some function like this which is somewhat representing flowing things along 2D. So if you want if you have a video of a 2D picture that is if you have a 2D video then what you will essentially have is a flow and that is some function c which is x y and t or in general I can write f of x y and t some function of x y and t. You can also think of c of x y and z some 3D like a double helix uh, which is some function of x y and z. So I want you to think about a helix and an equation for a helix. What is an equation for a helix? I want all of you to think about it. Uh, this is will be some function of x y and z and double helix is a very important thing in biology. So I want you to all of think of what is the mathematical function for a helix. Maybe at some point we will discuss this. You can also think of c as a x y z and t which is something flowing in 3D right. So these are functions so both flow and images can be thought of as some mathematical functions. That is the message of today's lecture. So I will just summarize what we discussed so far today. So let me to summarize the summary. So we had some function z is x of some z is a function of x comma y some simplest thing we said <coughs> or f x plus y or any other function that we can write. We wrote this as a heat map or a color coded map and correspondingly I can think of this as a fluorescent layer different fluorescence at different locations and then I also said that 3D functions and flow also can be thought of as f of x y and t. So this is to go beyond the simple function we learned. Train yourself to think about function as in 2D and 3D and f of x comma y, f of x comma y comma z and f of x comma y comma z comma t. So train yourself for this, think about it and we will discuss this more detail in detail later. Bye.